And uh, what they did is they have particles that are introduced into this uh, microfluidic channel. They have opposing uh, surface acoustic wave transducers. Uh, they create standing waves. And larger particles are uh, more readily moved to the standing waves than the small and smaller particles. Now, since then, two groups have thought about doing something similar uh, using a tilted acoustic, uh, tilted uh, microfluidic channel. Uh, we have, we talked about this at the conference last year, and also uh, members of the same group and some other people have talked about doing the same thing at just about the same time. And oddly enough, one of the co-workers here has just recently become president of Carnegie Mellon University uh, in one of those bizarre coincidences. But anyway, the idea here is that there are sanding waves created in this channel and uh, because uh, of the tilted nature of those standing waves, uh, larger particles are more readily able to climb over those uh, potential barriers, and therefore smaller particles get separated from larger particles. Now, uh, since we tried to do this with a surface acoustic wave channel, we decided to move something to something which is a little different, uh, namely a uh, channel created in a bulk piece of plexiglass with channels built into the bulk piece of plexiglass, and using not surface acoustic waves, but PCT wafers to create the acoustic waves. Uh, now, why would we do this? One reason is mechanical robustness. Uh, the other is that it might turn out to be a more uh, mechanically uh, uh, man easily manufacturable technique. So here you see a picture of the device that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, we have inlets for uh, a flow of particles and some sheath flow. And at the output side, we divide those flows again, but we bring them back together again for convenience. So this shows a picture of the particles moving through the tilted channel. Uh, the idea is that the larger particles are more readily deflected to node lines than the smaller particles, and therefore they end up being separated at the end of the uh, channel. So that is the basic concept. Uh, now, um, the, uh, what we do is we create standing waves that are parallel to the transducers in the, tilt, in the tilted channel. Those particles are subject to uh, both the drag force and the acoustic force driving them toward the node lines. And the larger particles are more easily deflected. Uh, this is an expression uh, for the uh, acoustic force experienced by those particles, where this C is an acoustic contrast factor. And this represents the shape of the uh, stand, standing waves. And here you see the picture from the top view showing the same thing. Uh, the device fabrication uh, that we will be talking about has a 4 millimeter long channel. It is 0.3 millimeters deep and uh, 1.27 millimeters wide. It is tilted at 30 degrees with respect to the uh, transducers. Uh, it is bonded to a matching piece of plexiglass with machine slots for the transducers and the backing. And both of these pieces of plexiglass are fabricated by using a computer-controlled milling machine. Um, we use about a 6.6 .6 megahertz drive, resulting in about 110 micron spacing between the nodes and a order of one millimeter per second water velocity. And here you see a more detailed picture of the uh, device showing that it is a few centimeters in length. Uh, first, I'd like to show that the standing waves are indeed uh, uh, produced uh, that are tilted. And what we're doing is we're looking down on a channel which has no flow and it has a mixture of 4.5 and 6 micrometer particles. And when the power is turned on, those particles segregate into parallel lines, which have a spacing of about 100 microns, uh, just as expected. So indeed, we are getting the desired um, uh, parallel tilted lines of acoustic power. Uh, so here are some photographs showing the deflection of particles. These two images over here are for two micrometer particles. And when there's no uh, acoustic power, uh, the two micrometer particles, there are a lot of them, so we can see just a, a line of uh, streaming particles over here. And when the power is turned on, that line is deflected down like so. Uh, 
that shows the movement of those two micrometer particles. Here we have a mixture of two micrometer particles and 15 micrometer particles. Uh, this is not a snapshot. This is now a composite image, show, show, so it shows the pathway of many particles. And you can see that the 15 micrometer particles are deflected into a, a node line, and the two micrometer particles are not. Uh, so experimentally, we do achieve some separation, and I'm going to focus much of the remaining uh, time to talk about how that happens and how it scales with the various parameters that we have in the device operation. Uh, so I will talk about the simulation of particle trajectories. Uh, the simulations are done in COMSOL 4.3 that has modules for laminar flow and for particle tracing in fluid flow. The particle tracing includes the mass of the particles, so it's including the effect of inertia. Uh, the particles are released at the center of the channel, and the simulation results that you'll see in the following slide are presented using a tilted coordinate system. You see these X and Y axes over here. Uh, so imagine that I've done the sensible thing with the image field of a uh, microscope. I've tilted the image field so as to maximize uh, the visualization of the channel region. So here are simulated particle trajectories uh, for three different values of acoustic pressure. And uh, blue means zero velocity, red means maximum velocity, and the line represents the pathway of the particle, or the trajectory of the particle. For zero acoustic pressure, the release particle just accelerates so that it matches the velocity of the uh, fluid, and then it just moves in a straight line. If we increase the acoustic pressure, we see an undulated path. The undulated path shows fluctuations in velocity. What's happening is the particle is climbing up a potential barrier and sliding down the other side of the potential barrier as it is dragged across the, uh, uh, the channel from one end to the other. And for very high acoustic pressure, uh, the particles just uh, are driven into a single node line, and they follow that node line until they reach the boundary of the uh, uh, channel. So those are the three possible trajectories of a single particle. These computations were for a six micrometer particle. So what we can do is we can do those simulations many, many times for different particle uh, diameters. By the way, these are all assumed to be polystyrene particles for different acoustic pressure, and we can compute the angle of deflection at the end of the channel. So this is not the following the individual undulations, but we're computing the uh, entire change as it flows from one end of this four millimeter channel to the other. And what you see is that, as expected, the larger particles are more rapidly deflected. Uh, they, when they hit the edge of the channel, that's course, the maximum deflection angle. Smaller particles are less readily deflected. Uh, if we do those these simulations many times and for additional parameters such as acoustic wavelength and water velocity, we can extract a power law for the average deflection angle. And this shows that um, power law, that power law is for fixed acoustic contrast. And the deflection angle is proportional to the sixth power of the particle radius, the fourth power of the acoustic pressure, inversely proportional to water velocity squared and wavelength squared. And this is exactly the sort of uh, power law which will be very useful in deciding what parameters to use for, reflect, for uh, separation and for how to design the particular, uh, a particular device. Uh, so one thing you can extract from this is a map of the behavior of particles for a particular set of parameters. So what I'm showing here is the effect of acoustic pressure on the vertical axis and average water velocity on the horizontal axis. There are different regions. In this region 4 over here, a 15 micrometer particle deflects with undulations, and the 2 micrometer particles don't deflect at all. Uh, in this large region 3 over here, 15 micrometer particles deflect to a node line, and 2 micrometer particles don't deflect at all. So this would be a very easy region to perform.
uniform separation in. As the power goes up or the water velocity goes down, uh, 15 micrometer particles deflect to the node line and two, micro, two micrometer particles begin to deflect. And finally, for highest uh, power or lowest velocity, all the particles settle to a node line. Now, of course, if we make the particle sizes more similar, the separation becomes more challenging. And that's seen in this slide over here, where I show the changes to uh, the boundaries if we switch to trying to separate 15 micrometer and 6 micrometer particles. Now that region 3 becomes much narrower in uh, allowable values of acoustic pressure and average water velocity. So uh, I'm going to summarize. Uh, I've demonstrated a tilted channel ultrasonic particle separation scheme based on bulk waves and plexiglass. Uh, this is potentially more robust and manufacturable than surface acoustic wave based schemes. Uh, simulations have been used to investigate particle trajectories and we've developed a power law that is useful for design. And NSF asks that I tell you something. And I also have a movie. which shows how you make these channels using a computer-controlled milling machine.